come back to our session, Quarter 3, Module 1. It's about correct and appropriate multimedia resources in personal v -counts. For our learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to identify the features of a personal recount, familiarize oneself with the details in writing a personal recount, use correct and appropriate multimedia resources in giving information, instructions, in making explanations, and in narrating events, and appreciate the correct and appropriate use of multimedia resources in giving information, giving instructions, in making explanation, and in narrating events in personal recount of experiences. For our first activity, you are given five minutes to answer. Directions, read the text, and answer the following questions that follow. Your timer starts now. All right, time's up. Now let's check your answer. What did the family celebrate? They had a picnic to celebrate a birthday. What happened when the family arrived at the park? It rained hard. Aside from the bad weather, what worsened the situation? They got two flat tires. How did the family feel after? The family felt tired and sleepy, but they were hopeful that next year's birthday celebration. If you were to give a detailed account of an event you personally witnessed, you would be telling a story step by step in chronological order. You will be writing a recount of personal experience. And then the passage you just read is an example of a personal recount. The writer recounted in details the events of their family outing. Recount. The purpose of this style of writing is to recall an event or experience of the writer for the reader's information or enjoyment. 
his or her experiences served as the raw materials for the recount. Types of recount, personal recount, these usually retell an event that the writer was personally involved in. Factual recount, recording an incident, for example, a science experiment, police report. Imaginative recount, writing an imaginary role and giving details of events. For example, a day in the life of a pirate and how I invented. Features of recount focuses on individual participants or events, events in chronological order, the order they happened, can use features such as dialogue and description to embellish the retelling. Writing a personal recount requires you to retell an activity that happened in your own life. Purpose of this? aims to inform or entertain or a combination of both. How to write a personal recount? Pick an appropriate title. Most recounts have a title and this title should summarize the text in few words. Example, a trip to the National Zoo. Next, set the orientation. The orientation includes all the background details the reader will need to understand the story. This includes the setting the participants the event. Explain what happened and where it happened. For example, if you are writing about an outing spent with your family, you can start something like this. Yesterday, my family and I went to the National Zoo and Aquarium to visit the new snow cubs and other animals. Third, set a clear and correct sequence of events. Chronological order of events must be observed to make your details coherent and united. There are many transition words you can use. Some examples of these connectors are in beginning statement, we can use first, of all, primarily, in the beginning, to start with, initially. For chronological order, we can use first, then, after that, next, later, soon. For additional information, we can use in addition, in addition to, as well as, as well as the same with, furthermore, moreover. Then summation, closure, and ending, we can use finally, eventually, to top it all, in conclusion, in the end. Examples. In the morning, when we got to the zoo, after we entered the zoo, we went straight. At lunchtime, Dad decided to cook. In the afternoon, we went to. Fourth tips to write a personal recount is use appropriate pronouns. The first person point of view is mainly used in personal recount. You will need to use the first personal pronouns such as I and we since the personal recount describes an event that personally happened in your life. Example, yesterday my family and I went to the National Zoo. My brother was excited to see the sharks. And lastly, use plenty of verbs. To effectively describe events and actions, you will need to use plenty of action words more formally known as verbs. Since the recount happened in the past, your story will be told in past tense. Example, first, I did fun watching a funny movie with my parents. Next, we went to the mall for grocery shopping. Then all of us went to dinner. Finally, we ended the day with mouth-watering dessert and went home. Count, title, the carnival, setting and participants, Last night, my family and I. Events in time order. First, I went on the Ferris wheel. I loved looking at all the people down below as the wheel spun around and around. After that, my sister was feeling hungry. Dad bought us all ice cream. I had chocolate chip and it was delicious. Finally, we went on the bomb cars. Personal observation or concluding statement, it was hilarious. It was so special spending time with my family at the carnival. Now let's try. You are given three minutes to answer. Using logical connectors, in writing personal recount, logical connectors are useful to indicate clear flow of ideas and sequence of events. Connect the two clauses in each item below with an appropriate connector. Choose from the word pool. Your timer starts now.
Time's up. Now, let's check your answer. For number one, I would like to have the face-to-face -face classes next school year. However, we do not have the vaccines yet. Number two, during this pandemic, people should exercise regularly so that they will have a healthy body. Number three, after the pandemic, there are three things I would like to do. First, I will go home to the province. Second, I will visit my relatives. And third, I will try pioneering with friends. And congratulations to those who got a perfect score. For our second activity, we have to examine if you're familiar with the given media or multimedia or not familiar. For animations, audio, brochures, graphical aids, charts, graphs, infographics, pictures, posters, slides, PowerPoint presentation, videos, or movies. Many speakers and educators use a variety of tools in explaining a process, giving information, describing details, and narrating events. The purpose of such is to aid the audience or listeners in getting the message of the talk. Speakers explaining a product demonstration through video presentation and PowerPoint presentations are common sites. No? These speakers seek the benefits of these multimedia resources to enhance communication. What is multimedia? It is a form of communication that combines different content forms such as text, audio, images, animations, or video into a single presentation. In contrast to traditional mass media such as printed material or audio recordings. Multimedia is a broad term for combining multiple media format. When text, audio, still images or photos, animation, video, and interconnectivity are combined together, the result is multimedia. Slides, for example, are multimedia as they combine text, images, and sometimes video and other media. We have here different media and multimedia resources. First is text materials. The basic way of conveying information. It is the simplest and oldest resource. This type of resource can be used in giving instructions, making announcements, conveying information, narrating events, and a lot more. Stories, news articles, novels, poems, brochures, magazines are some examples. Another thing is audio files. is a record of captured sound that can be played back. It can be stored in a cassette tape, a disc, or a flash tray. Cellular phones and laptops can also be used to record sound. Your website or presentation can add sound from a musical background to a spoken explanation by including audio files. Even digital cameras, which is image-based technology, have been engineered these days to record sound as well. Most sound files are compressed, which reduces the file size without greatly sacrificing sound quality. Third, we'll have pictures, photographs, and still images. Photographs, drawing or painting, and still images, they are all single static image as distinguished from a moving image, that is a movie. These are common in photography and visual arts. Images can be an effective way of presenting abstract concepts or groups of data. These have been proven for decades as tools in conveying information. And digital technology has made images more re readily available and easier to incorporate into teaching and learning materials. Fourth is slides and PowerPoint presentations. It is a presentation program developed by Microsoft. PowerPoint is often used to create business presentations and are great for educational purposes. The presentations are comprised of slides which may contain text, images, and other media, such as audio clips and movies. These can be used in giving information, explaining a process, and narrating events. The last is videos. A video presentation is a popular form of multimedia presentation with a duration of several seconds or minutes that are utilized for business presentation and educational purposes. 
In education, videos are utilized in the classroom to aid in presenting a lesson. They capture the attention of the audience. They appeal to all types of learners and learning styles. They increase students' participation and in turn boost retention and achievement. With a camera in your phone, you can record video for your presentation of any school-related task such as presenting a story, an experience, an explanation of a concept, and a lot more. To apply what you have learned, decide what multimedia resource will you use given the task in col first column. Write the type of multimedia resource in the second column and give short explanation of your choice. You are given three minutes to do it and your timer starts now. Now let's check your answer. Here you can choose any multimedia resource as long as you can explain it thoroughly. Number one, you are asked to narrate a personal experience. We can use audio. You can express the story more using narration and voice that pause. For number two, explain the difference between COVID-19 and the common flu. We can use graphic arts. It would be easy to make charts with information like similarities and differences of COVID-19 and the common flu. For number three, give instructions to follow health protocols at home. We can use text. And this can be shown to people in posters or signs. And based on the area, we can change the language of the text more easily than if it was said by a human. Number four, explain why typhoons happened. We can use PowerPoint presentation. This is a good way to present how typhoons happen because you can add many images and information there. Lastly, narrate the latest movie you saw. We can use text. For example, if you're asked to narrate a certain movie that you've recently watched, you can write an essay or a summary of the movie. And that's it. To sum it up, multimedia resources can be used in giving an instruction, making an explanation, and in narrating personal recounts of experiences. Thank you so much for listening. Hope that you've learned something today. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.